Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of PLA with myself and Nick and Bruno. Uh, we've got two questions uh, today, one from Anonymous on Facebook and one from an agent as well. And then we're going to go into the first question with yourself, Nick, which comes from Anonymous on Facebook. Um, Anonymous says that she signed or, or he signed an agreement uh, to purchase uh, at the beginning of this year. Um, she also paid the deposit and the property is supposedly uh, ready for occupation this December. Um, due to some financial difficulty for family member losing their job, uh, she needed to then become the financial bearer of certain responsibilities and now won't be able to afford that property any longer. She did uh, consult an, an investment consultant which advised her to sort of go via email that she could cancel at any time and get that deposit that she paid refunded right so her question is would that type of cancellation of her email actually carry any weight and can she even cancel um and what of course be the implications of such and what uh, are we looking at in terms of wasted costs uh, in our opinion nick okay so um Obviously, the, the, the trick with this particular um, question is there's obviously an offer to purchase and a sale agreement in respect of the property. And that's mm -hmm. going to be the pinnacle document here. You've got to read that document. So this this rights has already gone to see an investment consultant. Um, I am I'm really hoping that the investment consultant can consulted the documentation in question, because, I mean, what the, their advice here. I'm assuming it is is going to be based on on a particular document. It may well be correct, um, if there's an interesting OTP in the circumstances that that just lets you cancel at any point without penalty. But uh, from my experience, <laughs> yeah, from my experience, I don't think there's such a document. Okay, it's very unlikely to have a, a, a deed of sale in respect of an immovable property that doesn't have some sort of uh, penalty if you're going to cancel the agreement, and in particular. Uh, you know, this, the occupation is, you know, occupation is going to be given in December, which means this is already a long way down the road um, at, at this point. You know, it's not like this contract was entered into yesterday. Um, and they said that they, they contracted at the beginning of the year. So, uh, you know, it's very difficult for me to say without having had a look at the documentation, can I cancel? Uh, there might be something in the, in the particular document that does allow you, but it, I, I'm, feel that's very unlikely. And the more unlikely thing is getting away with cancellation without a penalty. Uh, deeds of sale usually have what's what's called a roque clause. Okay, and a roque basically says that anything that's paid um, prior to a cancellation of the agreement is going to be retained by the seller of the property as a pre-estimation of damages. This is a very common clause in, in uh, deeds of sale and it's an enforceable clause as well. So this writer has said already that they paid a deposit in respect to the particular premises. So obviously that deposit can be anything. It just depends on the agreement that's entered into. It could be 10%, could be 99%. Um, and if that contract contains a ROQA clause, um, it's very likely that whatever that deposit that's been paid in respect of the sale is going to be retained by the seller in the circumstances as a pre-estimate of damages. Um, I've... I don't know too many deeds of sale that don't have a, a clause like that unless they are, you know, a, a very special home written up sort of OTP. Mm -hmm. So in, in the circumstances, I know you've gone to an investor uh, and they've they've provided you with advice on this. I don't know what the qualification of your particular investor is, but my suggestion would be go see a lawyer about it um, just in case perhaps, you know, maybe they're absolutely correct. The investor, you know, the the financial advisor you saw, maybe they're 100% correct. You go give it to an attorney and they go, yes, that's that's 100%. But just in case, um, you know, that, that advice, the advice is just a little bit arbitrary from a from a legal perspective, I think. Um, so just in case, cover your bases, make sure you go see an attorney, give them the legal documentation. Obviously, you know, investors do a lot of different things and they, they come from a lot of different angles for what they're trying to do for you. And Sometimes they're also they're not good at legal advisors. Um, you know they they aren't experts in interpreting contracts and and dealing with with the legal implications of cancelling contracts. So I'd really say, um, you know, do a double check. Go see an attorney. Seek out one of our offices, please. Uh, let us have a look at the document. You know, if there's 
if it's a simple, straightforward thing, I'll, I'll speak for Bruno on this particular aspect. It, it's not going to be something that's that's going to incur a charge. You know, it'll be a, a quick rinse over a document. If it's something more complicated, then at least you've done the groundwork and you don't get yourself into trouble. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so thank you very much, Nick, uh, with regards to that. And once again, with uh, OTPs, it's best to get them reviewed. So do reach out to one of our team members at BSA or SSLR. Um, let's get the OTP reviewed for you. Go on our website, take a look at the different products that we have, where we're able to take a look and go through different clauses of your OTPs. Um, so thank you very much, Nick, for that specific question uh, or answer.